Hi, my name is Sean Bodley. I'm with IBM and part of the Advanced Technical Skills Team located out of Dallas, Texas. I'm a high availability and disaster recovery specialist on the power systems, uh, specifically using PowerHA clustering software, both Standard Edition and Enterprise Edition. And I'm about to perform a demonstration of how to add additional storage into a existing active PowerHA cluster. Now with this demonstration, like my other demonstrations, if you have any questions or comments or even suggestions for additional demos, please send me an email at the email address listed here at sbodily at us.ibm.com. So first, let me give an overview of, of the cluster configuration. This is my typical two-node cluster, a hot standby, I only have a single service IP address and a single data volume group in my particular environment. I don't have an application server defined, uh, so it's a very simple cluster. Now, I'm also going to give an overview of the steps. Now, this isn't every single exact step I'm going to perform uh, in the demo, but this is an overview of how to add additional storage by creating another volume group and adding it to the cluster. Overall, adding additional storage to an existing cluster is by far the most common administrative procedure you will perform on your cluster. Uh, you can add a new volume group, you can e extend an existing one, you can add you know, more space to an existing file system. For this particular demo, we're going to add a new volume group add a logical volume, and add a new file system onto it. I will uh, create additional demos to show other options for adding additional space. So first and foremost, you have to make sure whatever disks you're going to allocate space on, they must already be configured to the cluster nodes and show up with their PBIDs. Uh, this is how PowerHA will know that it's a, quote, shared disk. Then we're going to use CSPOC to create the volume group. Uh, we're doing that because it'll actually save us a step later of having to add the volume group into the resource group itself. Uh, after that, I'm actually going to demonstrate how to use the command line, the CSPOC command line, for creating a new logical volume and file system. But I will also show you the menus of how to do it in SMIT uh, before actually showing the CLI usage. Now this next bullet on here is really just to kind of call out that I, I mentioned that the most common procedure is to add space. Well actually the most common problem with maintaining an HA cluster is very skilled AIX administrators administering it in a non-cluster aware fashion, uh, meaning they rely on the native LVM commands to perform the changes. Now those those don't always get propagated to the other nodes in the cluster. There are some things that will happen automatically when an existing volume group is active in enhanced concurrent mode, but there's specific things like file systems and file system attributes, also adding a new volume group, uh, that will not get synced across the cluster automatically. So the best practice and recommended procedure is replace your normal AIX LVM commands with the CSPOC CLI command to perform the same function. That way, if you have a script that's running these commands, you can just do a simple find and replace uh, in the script to do the same thing. And then after these changes are made, we're going to synchronize the cluster and verify that the volume group is active and that the file system is mounted. Okay, I have my two nodes, uh, Jordan and Jessica. Uh, Jessica is actually the primary node, which is in the pink, and the green is Jordan. Uh, actually, all I'm showing here is the volume group and the HDisk listing. And for the example of creating a new volume group, we're going to use HDisk 3. Now, in my environment, it does happen to be HDisk 3 on both nodes. You can see it ends in the Alpha David 5 Charlie. 
that proves that it's the same physical disk. I'm also going to show over here using my favorite cluster status tool called QHA. I'm going to show that the cluster is up and running. Jessica owns the resource group, has a single volume group called Data VG. I am using version 712 with SP1. And that Jordan is up and running. He's just in standby mode. So first thing I'm going to do on Jessica is I'm going to go to Smitty CSpoc to create the volume group. So I choose storage, volume groups, create a volume group, and I choose both nodes. And this is actually going to sit here and think about it for a second. What it actually does is it performs a discovery to find any disks that are shared based on the PVID and are not part of an existing volume group. All that means is that it says none in the output of LSPV. If there's actually VGDA information on the disk, it could actually fail uh, later when creating the volume group. So make sure it's a free disk. Now right here you can see resource group name. This gives me the ability to not only create the volume group, but go ahead and add the volume group into the resource group. So I don't have to go do a change show uh, resources and attributes of a resource group later. I can automatically put it in here. I also have the option of if I typed in a name of a resource group, it would create a brand new resource group for me with default settings. And the default settings are what we consider the most common settings of available on home node, fail over the next node, and don't fail back. So you can have it create a new resource group. It'll just be the only resource in that resource group if you create a new one. So for this volume group, I'm just going to name it Demo VG. Uh, you may choose to set your partition size if you wish. And I'm really not going to change anything else uh, listed on here. I'm not going to be doing any LVM mirroring, so I'm not going to be doing uh, mirror pools. So I'm going to go ahead and tell this to create. So it mar marks it in enhanced concurrent. Remembering in version 7.1, only enhanced concurrent mode volume groups uh, are supported. So you can also see, actually if I scroll down here, it says it discovered the volume group and on Jordan, which is the second node, it says the volume group has been imported. So if I jump over to Jordan and just do an LSPV, I can see the demo VG exists. So it did get imported. I'm going to go back to running my cluster status. And now we're ready to create uh, logical volume and or file systems. I'm going to do one of each. I'm going to create a logical volume and put a file system right on top of it, uh, but I'm going to do it through the CLI. But if you wanted to use CSPOC, you can use these SMIT menus right here to create a logical volume, and it will pull up the list of volume groups. So you can see uh, data VG, demo VG, but I'm not going to do that. Same thing for file systems. You could add a new file system. Okay, so I'm going to jump out and do this from the command line. Now, I'm already in the directory where the CLI commands exist, user ES has been cluster CSPOC. And if you do a listing on CLI asterisk, you can see all these CLI underscore commands. So in our case, we're going to use the CLI make LV. And since I've already done this recently, I'm just going to recall the command. So I'm going to create the logical volume called dbfs1lv on demo vg. And if you look up here just for a second, you can see that uh, to create that, it actually has to vary on the volume group. And then it turns around and varies it right back off again. So if I check, I'll see that demo VG is not active, but it did come on for just a second. Now, I've created the logical volume. I'm now going to create the file system and put on top of it. So here I'm choosing dbfs1lv, creating a file system called dbfs1.
And if you actually happen to notice on the top left, it showed Demo VG uh, activated again for just a second on No Jordan. So now if I do an LSPV, I can still see that Demo VG is not active. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually vary it on just to show that I have both the uh, logical volume and file system created. So there's my logical volume, there's my file system. Now, of course we expect it to exist on this system because that's where I created it. So now let's do the same thing over on Node Jordan and prove that it has all the information it needs to know about the logical volume and file system. And it does. So there's all the information uh, that we need here. So now I'm going to vary it back off. Now, of course, if you had multiple to create, whether it was volume groups, logical volumes, file systems, all of the above, uh, you could run a script, run these commands, create it all from uh, one side, and it will automatically update the other side for you. Now that we've added it, it has already been added to my resource group, and I can show you that from CL Show Res can see here that demo VG has been added. However, it's not part of our active cluster config. So we must run a cluster sync to have that be uh, protected in our running environment now. So you're probably familiar, when you run a sync and verify, this actually takes a minute or two. Uh, I'm going to go back and run the cluster status information on Jordan because what we're actually going to see is when it actually starts making the cluster configuration change, it's going to run a reconfig resource event. And this will ultimately end up activating the demo volume group and mounting the file system on NodeJesca. And you can see it's creating a cluster snapshot down here. It's going to change the configuration, but it's going to make a snapshot first. So now you can see it's actually going to run a, a, a recovery. It's actually going to reconfig the resource group. So here you go, reconfig topology. There's really no topology for it to change in this particular case, it's really going to reconfig the resources. And if we keep watching down here, we're going to see that the demo volume group comes online. So here we go, reconfig resource acquire. This is where it's actually going to do the real work that we're concerned about. And there it is. So demo VG has now showed varied on. And as soon as this finishes running the reconfig and the cluster stabilizes, I will show that it's active on NodeJesco. Well, it's already showing stable again. I click over here, and I've got the OK prompt. So now if I look, I've got the both demo volume group and data volume group online. If I do a DF, I'm going to see that DBFS1 is mounted. And of course on Node Jordan, we'll also see that demo VG is online, but it's just in passive mode, and that's normal for the failover node to have it varied on in passive mode. So with that, I'm actually going to conclude this demonstration of adding additional space to an existing active cluster. And as I said before, if you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, feel free to send me an email. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this demo. Thanks for watching.